Crystal Yogis. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Kristen Maldonado, the Crystal Yogi here, and I'm at the Crystal Yoga Studio here in Missouri City, Texas, right on the border of Sugarland, Texas. So come and see us anytime that you want to come by and get some stones. We would be absolutely loving uh, to have you. So today, uh, we're going to talk about a few different things, a couple different crystal topics. Um, things like crystal curating your collection and how do you know if your crystals are ethically sourced, um, where, what kind of um, shop you get your crystals from, uh, what type of jewelry are you getting made, and what types of intentions and other things are going into buying your crystals and making sure that everything is working out to the best of your favor. Okay, so I have a bunch of stones and I have a lot of stuff to discuss. We have sage, so you can always cleanse and clear your area anytime you need to. And we have a sage and palo santo. Both of those are really great ridding herbs and uh, positive uplifting herbs so that you can clean and cleanse your space no matter what is going on in your environment. So let's take a moment, take a seat. Let's take it in the right mindset and get some crystals around us and let's start getting into some of the awesomeness. So there's a lot of questions that go into getting crystals for your collection and I get asked a lot of questions, you know, where do your crystals come from, you know, how do you make them, uh, what, is, what are they about, you know, they don't really have a whole lot of um, knowledge about the backstory behind crystal healing, what that even means, and how we use the crystals in our daily lives. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to kind of give you guys a little bit of a backstory. Um, crystal healing has been used for thousands of years, and crystals have been used as talisman, as uh, crystals of power, um, with intention for thousands and thousands of years. Uh, they are considered sacred amongst uh, many different cultures. Um, jade is very popular uh, in the Orient because it's said to bring luck and prosperity and abundance to your family and to the wearer. Um, and that's true of lots of other stones from different places as well. And you can look at history and go back and really like even the Bible, um, and I've said that in other videos, and kind of look back and see what stones are being referenced where in the world, what are they being used for. Um, Egyptians used to pulverize lapis lazuli and use it to uh, as teeth fillers. Um, and because uh, lazulite is such a powerful healing stone, you know, it, some, maybe not be something we do to, uh, commonly today, but it you know it's not far off. It makes sense. Maybe that is a better option than you know uh, a lot of the stuff that they put in our mouths today with filling. You know, who's to say that that isn't uh, something better to do? But that'd be cool to look into. Um, so you uh, can look back and see that this is a practice that has been used for thousands of years. And so what crystal healing is, is someone that is a practitioner that has uh, studied crystal healing, um, some uh, have even gone through certifications uh, and accreditations to get um, a license, and they are licensed to work on you by healing the body um, by energetic means. So this isn't necessarily like a massage or anything like that. Um, it's all metaphysical, which means that um, the practitioner is going to more or less act as a conduit um, for the healing energy between the rocks, uh, the stones, and you. Um, so let's say you have uh, an imbalance. Um, if you know anything about chakras or meridians or anything like that, that's some more... Uh, information that you can look at as well and if you come to our classes we do uh, go into a lot of detail about energy centers and the chakras and blockages and all types of really great information that kind of help you along in your daily life and so let's say you're having an imbalance and uh, we have a stone that is more than likely going to be able to revert that in, back into balance back into alignment back into center where it belongs uh, and I can give you several uh, examples of this um, so just a few moments ago and give you a perfect example. Um, I was having uh, sort of like an allergy attack. It's uh, going down a little bit now, but um, I was having like a sneezing fit earlier, so I went and grabbed my lipidolite mica, and I usually will hold it somewhere near my chest, um, even in my throat, or um, uh, if, I ha if I happen to have two on me, I will put one on each side of the um, lymph nodes, and I can feel it start to clear out and clear my... Um, throat and to clear my sinuses and since a few more 
a little bit bigger piece, but that's okay. I'll just stick them both there. And so this is gonna get rid of my allergies. It's an antihistamine, and so we can use this for people that have severe allergies to dogs. Maybe they all of a sudden develop an allergy for pets or things like that. Um, but you want to be able to understand what type of energy that we're working with. So the rocks aren't magic, right? Um, but they are vibrating at a very specific frequency. Um, just like when we play the crystal sound bowls, each one has a note and our bodies kind of tune to the note that's being played during the sound healing. So crystals are exactly the same. Each one is vibrating at a specific resonance and you know, um, that resonance is a very, very high vibration. Stones are very dense. And so when you put something in its field, it's going to have to raise its vibration. And so um, the low vibration of the, uh, the allergen is sort of kind of bringing my body down into a grounded state. So the crystal, specifically this one being a very high vibrating stone, um, is going to counteract that and uplift my energy and if you're really good with meditation, you'll be able to feel a lot of your stones working uh, during a healing session or you know, when you're using them on yourself. Uh, and the more and more you practice, uh, the more and more that you'll be able to feel these subtle body effects. Now that could feel like pulling, um, biting sensations, like little, little tingles. Um, you can feel pressure, uh, cooling, heating, movement, all types of really awesome things um, that you can notice as you go forth and you're working uh, with new stones. So if you can find a experienced and dedicated uh, crystal practitioner, I highly recommend that. And um, I'm sure wherever you are in any state that you'll be able to find it. It's not um, that uncommon of a practice uh, uh, in the last few years. So I have been practicing crystal healing for over six years um, and I have a geology background and I really, really love the stones and I feel like I was much more able to attune to their, their metaphysical properties because I had already had so much experience um, with their scientific properties. So it's much easier for me to kind of understand what the purpose was um, after being exposed to it and of course trying it out for myself. And that's the, really the best way to find out about crystal healing is to try it out for yourself. Um, get some stones and work with them for a little while and see how they make you feel. See if you notice any subtle differences, anything that's going on that they've been um, possibly helping you with, any intentions that you've been setting. And um, that will really, really help you. And there's lots of little tips and tricks, um, things that you can keep in mind when purchasing crystals that will kind of help you along your journey. Um, so we can talk now about a little bit of that ethical sourcing. Um, so sometimes people ask me where I get my stones and I get my stones from all over the world. I do travel a lot um, and I have made uh, lots and lots of contacts uh, over the years of uh, the best quality um, affordable stones um, in the city. And so, I definitely feel like you want to not only find a vendor that's going to be ethically sourcing their crystals as in um, being very much involved in the process, uh, vetting um, different vendors and how, you know, again, where you're getting your crystals from, especially if they are for resale. Um, and also, as consumers, you want to very much have in mind, you know, where are these crystals coming from, um, how am I going to be using them, you know, what part of the country do they come from, little things that, you know, just help you along the way. And um, if you are unfamiliar with asking your practitioners about crystal knowledge, um, they, I'm sure they would be more than happy to explain some things to you. And that's why it's so important to find um, authentic crystal practitioners so that you can make sure that you're getting the high quality, uh, the highest quality service that's available to you. And that's for several different reasons. Um, many, many places uh, sell stones and rocks. I distinctly remember when I was a child, um, uh, the Discovery Channel store um, sold rocks and, and it was more from a, a geology standpoint. I remember how amazing it was. Um, they weren't ones to to, to promote 
healing properties. It was more information about where it was in the world, what it, you know, what it's made of, things like that, which is again much more of a identification based on geology. Um, but nowadays, it's uh, rare to find um, stones and minerals based in a um, geological perspective. Uh, it's much more inclined that you're going to see rocks and minerals from a spiritual perspective, and I think that's a really amazing thing to look at. And um, the healing community is growing, and I'm so happy for that. And what's great about it is there's so many awesome things that you can learn um, once you know the ins and outs of kind of uh, where you can navigate uh, in this community and in this industry. Um, so rocks are so amazing, and I just love that. Um, they come in these amazing, beautiful, raw forms. This is a lovely rose, raw rose quartz. It's quite huge. Um, and this is often how you may see stones in their raw state before they turn into jewelry. They may be a huge piece like that, and a tiny cabochon that you maybe get from a jewelry store may be in all the way inside that this small, you know? And unfortunately, sometimes they have to break apart something big and beautiful like this just to shave it off and make something that tiny. But you know, um, it's just again what kind of crystals you're uh, in preference with. Uh, many people really like the jewelry aspect, and a lot of a lot of others really like this raw form. So it's kind of you know, um, to each his own. And uh, what I, I love all crystals, no matter what they look like, and I think they're all beautiful. Um, but what is really good if you can find places um, that are knowledgeable about not only where they come from in the world, but what kind of healing properties. That's a, a, an even plus for you. So. Um, what I like to offer my clients is um, several years of knowledge, uh, not only about the scientific uh, geological perspective on the crystals and stones and of course location and all of that, um, but also the healing properties as well. And what's great is that when you find people that are uh, ethically and authentically sourced and vetted and you know they've gone through a formal education, um, they can not only help you a lot more with your experience and your intention with the stones, um, it prevents um, you from double purchasing and maybe getting some wrong information and there's some great information online but a lot of the time this hasn't been um, you know, tested and that hasn't been experienced by the project by the um, user or practitioner. So what I like to say is kind of use yourself as practice and use yourself as experience and really kind of see it rather than just taking people's word for it like use the stones and and see how they make you feel and um and, and kind of work with them and give them some some space and open up to them um sometimes uh you might find a place um i think recently some of the malls have been opening up um with places that sell stones as well but unfortunately once you get kind of go more into the bigger uh, chain places, um, the farther and farther you get away from the real intention of uh, what the stones mean and um, the purpose behind them. And, you know, that's just, that's just kind of how it is, the world we live in. But um, when you find a place that also is knowledgeable about the all the different aspects of stones, it makes your job as a consumer a lot easier and being able to find what you need for healing or find what you need uh, for emotionality or maybe you're just looking to make um, jewelry and it's a lot easier if you're trying to make that intention um, with someone that's experienced. And uh, we are absolutely thankful that you guys come in all the time and ask so many questions. So I'm really, really excited about uh, making this video for you guys because I know a lot of you always have questions about things like this. And I'll about bring up uh, brings up my next point. It's so important to um, know where you're getting your crystals from and making sure that you're um, talking to a qual uh, qualified professional because when you're using stones. Um, I've heard lots of talk where it's like, okay, crystals can't really hurt you, crystals can't really, you know, they're, they're all good, they're all amazing, and that's so true, and, and that is true that they, you know, that they can't necessarily hurt you in some instances, um, but just like we did in one of our other crystal healing videos, we talked about the crystal elixir bottles and how only certain types of stone can, stones can be ingested, only certain types of stones can be entered inside the body, and, um, and so those are all really important things. And if you're dealing with a um, licensed professional and someone that's gone to school, um, it's really important that they're gonna be able to know this type of information and prevent mishaps. Um, so for instance, 
we have lots of azurite malachite here. And these are some uh, beautiful, amazing stones. And you see the, the blue and you see the green. And we've talked in other videos that in its raw form, which these are, they're quite toxic. And so you don't want to be touching your eyes or uh, your mouth after handling these specific types of stones. And it's very important that you know which ones are hazardous and which ones are toxic and which ones you should ingest and which ones you shouldn't. And um, again, that's why you want to make sure you're going with uh, an ethically sourced place, um, some place that's going to be a little bit more knowledgeable on what to, you can do with your stones um, versus, you know, um, a place that's not going to be as knowledgeable about the specific healing aspects. Now, if you're not necessarily worried about them, then that's another issue. That's not an issue, but it's another situation as well. Um, maybe you're only getting it for that purpose, but it is helpful to know what they're for so that you're adequately gifting or adequately, you know, giving people the correct type of energy. Um, if that's what the intention is. Uh, for example, if you're trying to, you know, help um, your godson um, get better night's sleep and you're, you heard stones are good for sleep, but then you happen to walk in and pick up maybe an oralite stone or a, um, <clears throat> some like a clear quartz. Now, that's gonna be really hard for someone to use and go to sleep at the same time. It's such a high vibrating stone, it's like giving them a cup of coffee. So putting those under the pillow is going to, only going to make their sleep um, even more erratic and maybe even cause more harm um, than good. So again, maybe instead using some shungite stones in the pillow for grounding. That way you absolutely know that it's for sleep aid and that they're going to send grounding energy uh, towards the bed and towards the, uh, the wearer uh, rather than uplifting energy. And even labradorites are great for sleep. I know that's a big one. Um, and so it's very important that you know, you're, you're knowing exactly what the specific intentions are for stones. And sometimes, um, if you're not asking these questions, these stores can kind of just put whatever on the labels and sometimes they're not really sure what they are, what they mean, and then so much of the intention gets lost in translation. Or if you're not dealing, uh, if you're dealing with people that maybe just sell rocks and crystals and they don't really know what the meaning is and they're, they're not even really sure what, of the names and, uh, or what the intentions are, maybe they don't know anything about intentions. And I've seen lots of uh, people over the years, now that crystal healing has become more popular, um, they kind of pass it off as um, very superficial and very, you know, uh, woo-woo and not, not really giving it the credit it deserves. And someone like me who's dedicated their life to um, holistic healing and finding alternative medicine um, via things that are not pharmaceutical, um, I really really like to share about the fact that um, it is definitely a practice that is, um, accredited, not necessarily as regulated as it should be, um, but again, uh, lots of healers are working towards that, um, and crystals are, have, again, have been used for thousands of years, and so the longer that you're kind of going back and doing your research, um, you can really find some really good information, and of course, um, using them is the best way to kind of test for yourself exactly what they feel like and what they do, and, and of course, the intention goes a long way to help you with that. But at, at the most thing you can do is definitely uh, try them out for yourself. Uh, this is one of my favorite pieces. It's a beautiful um, amethyst druzy. <sighs> so gorgeous. And so this is really, really good for a home piece. And so you definitely wouldn't want to put this baby um, by a bedside table either because this baby will keep you up all night for sure. So maybe a mantle, something where lots of energy is moving and I can clear a lot of energy. Um, but really... You don't want to put anything like this by the bed either. Um, but again, quartzes are going to be really high vibration stones and keep you up at night. The only one I would suggest would be the Lepidolite because it's a neutralizer and a pain reliever. And those go very well um, underneath the bed and they allow uh, a balance of energy. And so we can talk next about some jewelry. So a lot of uh, what I hear, um, some people get a little bit confused with um, what the what it means to set an intention or how they set an intention and you know even when we're making our custom malas um, it's very important that you're understanding um, what the process is and what that means for you as the mala wearer and so 
what is so important because um, lots of places sell jewelry and um, lots of lots of people wear different types of stones without necessarily attaching any specific significance to it. Um, let's, um, if we're just talking about even uh, your wedding ring, um, the diamond has a very specific significance. Um, the stone in and of itself represents purity and power and union and love and acceptance. And um, so next time somebody tells you they don't believe in crystal healing, ask them what they think their diamond represents. <laughs> um, so. Um, what's great about the malas is, is that we start with our base pieces and here it's so important to create the intention um, and that's why it's important again to go with a um, someone that's really understanding the crystal energy and being able to set an intention and help you set an intention for your individual piece and how do we do that how do we set intentions so this was asked a couple of times um, since we've been making these mala orders. Um, what type of intention? How do I set one? Um, what does that even mean? And so an intention is something that you want to align with, uh, something that maybe either is out of balance or you feel is uh, has created a lack in your, in your experience, or maybe it's too much, maybe you need to rein it in. But it's um, the intention is some type of maybe even a goal or a state of mind um, that you want to achieve. You know, maybe you want to attract more abundance or you want to attract lo more love into your life. Um, this specific uh, mala right here is all about um, connecting the heart to the third eye. And so the base is a rainbow moonstone for the um, throat, the third eye, and the crown. Uh, very much of divine feminine goddess energy and i have lipidolite the same one that we talked about i'm a, i try to have at least one piece of lipidolite on all of my jewelry because i have so much allergy issues and so that's something i already know that is an intention of mine like yes i want it to be beautiful and yes i want it to um have some great intentions but i also want to use it as a, in a practical sense and you know someone that maybe has diabetes or maybe somebody that has heart issues you want to put some of that in there as well um in addition to whatever external intentions that you have for your jewelry as well and so thinking taking a moment maybe meditating on it and thinking about what it is that you that you want to create what type of energy is that do you want to match with, right? What type of energy do you want to mirror? And so I have kunzite, rutilated quartz, and citrine on here. So the kunzite is very much going to be for opening the third eye and being able to see beyond uh, the physical realm. And I have citrine and the rutilated quartz for abundance and money and success. And of course, uh, the rainbow moonstone for uh, the divine feminine goddess energy. And to uh, all of these are used as cooling stones. And so I very much feel very connected to it. Um, again, it has an allergy stone on there, so I don't have to worry about wearing too many different malas. Um, I can usually stick to one at a time because most of them are going to have at least one or two intentions that are consistent with what I need physically as well as energetically. And so sometimes you might order your, uh, see malas online or um, you see people making jewelry. And what happens often, and some people will bring in their malas and their jewelry or beads uh, from you know, online places or other stores that weren't made um, as quality or not weren't made as with uh, the same type of intention in mind. And so that's not a problem. We can restring your, uh, your original and um, sometimes uh, the beads aren't uh, the same quality or you go into um, a bigger store and you'll get maybe a, a, a wrapped piece or, or something that is un, uh, not as familiar with it and maybe the stone isn't correct. Maybe it's not the one that you thought it was and they gave you this intention with your stone and, and the stone wasn't even correct so the intention is now off and that kind of makes you feel differently about it later on. So making sure that you're asking the right questions and, and getting again um, some really good answers back on what type of real intentions you want to make for yourself and, and what type of time and effort are you going to be putting into um, your healing practices, uh, whether it's buying loose stones or buying a piece of jewelry or even um, working with a healing practitioner. That's very important too. Are you um, looking for somebody that, that uh, has a lot of experience, that has been working with stones a long time? or? or um, 
uh, have you only found someone that maybe is in their first year or two um, of their crystal practitionership? And so all good things um, to look at when you're um, looking how to do healings and looking how to purchase stones and how to start your collection or what type of intention, you know, if you're trying to make a piece of jewelry, you know, what you're looking at or how do you go about doing that? Um, so I really wanted to hop on, hop on and talk a little bit about that. And same thing when we're working with bowls, um, you want to get some good uh, high quality material and that's what crystal yoga is all about is providing you with the highest quality material and uh, ethically sourced crystals and uh, professional healers. And so um, if you guys have any other questions about the different types of crystals that we use or where we get our crystals sourced from, um, let us know. We can always have a chat with you about that. Um, what type of healing intentions that you want to set for um, any jewelry pieces that you'd like to make or wrap or create. Uh, we're always here for you to give you the best experience possible with your new crystal healing um, you know, endeavors and what it's like to be able to heal the body holistically without as much medicine and being able to let the body do its own thing, let it heal itself and um, kind of let go and surrender the body to uh, all of the lovely crystal healing magic um, and connecting to source, connecting to God and consciousness, the collective uh, in this world and giving gr thanks and gratitude for uh, how many crystals we have in the world and being able to um, find them and let them use us or uh, let, heal with them and um, so they can let us use them for helping mankind. And so thank you so much uh, for watching my video. Um, we'll go ahead and take a few uh, deep breaths and... Maybe you want to use your stones for a little bit of intentional meditation, rubbing your palms together, coming into a nice seated position, and you can bring your hands either down towards your knees or lifting the heart center up to the sky, chin level to the floor, just take a couple of deep breaths here. Center. Thank you so much for joining me this evening, sharing your energy with me. Bringing thumbs to third eye center of the forehead. The light within me honors and bows the light within all of you. Namaste. Thanks again, guys, for watching my video and make sure that you're checking in online and seeing all of our new classes. I will see you guys soon.